Uh, many of us have changed our shopping habits over the past few years, buying online rather than hitting the high street. But how much personal information do we then give away when we click on that buy mm. button? Well, some companies are able to track your purchases and use your data to get you to buy more. So how can you protect your all-important privacy? Joining us now is consumer champion and tech expert David McLennan. Good morning to you. What are your top tips on this? Because you so often you're asked at the till, would you like a receipt or would you like us to email it? And I feel like it's a trick. I never want the email, but I don't want the paper either. But they're just, they'll get you every way. Yet you're still very happy to use a loyalty card if it means you'll get something in exchange. I think consumer trust in how online retailers are respecting our privacy as we're browsing from site to site looking for the, be for the best deals, that that trust is at a bit of a low point. And that's why this this research, this uh, this retail trust index that uh, empathy.co have uh, come up with uh, of research is, is particularly interesting. And it's talking about this practice, exactly what you say, of tracking our behavior across all the different websites that we visit. And then in a sense, using our history, the stuff that they've slurped, at a, uh, slurped up about us against ourselves, yes, to sell us things that they think we might be interested in. But people, consumers are getting a bit spooked out by that. And they're starting to change their attitudes. And really interesting, I think, for retailers to change their behaviours in the real world as well. What about the adverts then, is it that you get? I mean, you only have to sort of browse something online and the next thing you know, it's appearing in all your feeds. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, so it's these. It's often these tracking cookies. Now, anyone who knows me knows I love a good cookie as much as anyone else, but there's a couple <laughs> of different types of cookies. And what we're talking about are these third-party cookies, to use a tech term, that track your browsing from website to website, and then they can serve you adverts. So if you were browsing for some shoes last week, and then within a couple of days, you start to see adverts for shoes, even though you bought them when you were first browsing for them, that's really frustrating. And that's the thing that's starting to, to spook uh, consumers out. And, you know, what's interesting from this research is that 50% of consumers are saying that they're going to change their online behavior to avoid this tracking. Uh, and in particular, 62% of people are so spooked out, they say that they're going to start going back into physical stores to avoid being tracked. You know, we've been talking about the death well, of the high street for the last the few years there, now, they? but is companies online tracking sending people back there? Well, they said they've shot themselves in the foot. Mm. Completely. And there are different categories here, and there are t some types of retailers that seem to be worst. So fashion retailers in particular, and this, this uh, Retail Trust Index did a, a few different types of research. It spoke to people to get... Oh, oh no. someone's, someone's tracking us, and they don't like what you're saying. They've turned your mic off. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know if that's your end or our end. I can't hear uh, Can you still oh, hear me? Back. I'm back. No idea what happened there. What I was saying was is that this research also took a look at the websites themselves and tried to work out which websites, which types of websites were doing more tracking. And interestingly, it turned out that the fashion retailers were the ones that seemed to track as most, which, again, is, is a great way of sending people back onto the high street. But it's supermarkets. They're the, they're the brands that customers tend to trust most. We, we go there every week, of course, and they're the ones that seem in general to serve as fewer of these tracking cookies. So, look, I, I think if retailers are being smart about things, they need to try and regain consumer trust and maybe be a little bit more transparent, perhaps, in how they track our online behaviour. I think as consumers, we get it. Look, we know advertising is a thing. Television channels, t television yeah. stations, uh, so, so much exists purely out of advertising. But it's when it goes from that kind of useful to ever so spooky and we feel as though we're being chased around online, We've that's the thing got, we don't David, like and that's what needs to change. Left. Hate to push, we've only got 30 seconds left. Are our phones listening to us? No. Uh, this, is, this is psychology and, and science. The fact is our phones probably don't need to listen to us. They know enough about the signals that we, that the websites we visit and so on, so that they can serve us adverts without having to listen to us. Cybersecurity researchers have been looking out for exactly this kind of thing, whether it's our, our home smart assistants or our smartphones. And if they did find that our phones, our Alexas, our Siri's were listening to us, they would be up in arms, but there's been no evidence of it yet.
Mm. David, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, still you, always you, suspicious. You, we've got <laughs> we've got all those sort of you know voice things. recognition things. machines in our house, and sometimes they just start talking to you without you prompting them. I'm like, what? Oh, that's because it thinks you've heard you. Mm, uh, I don't anyway. like it.